Mm. Oh, you want to talk about this card, don't you? So what I have here is the Radeon RX Vega 56 reference model. So, um, hard to get. So now that we got an RX Vega 56 in the house, let's talk specifications. 56 compute units, 21 teraflops of peak half precision compute performance, peak single precision compute performance is at 10 and a half teraflops, stream processors at 3,584, the pixel fill rate's 94, uh, texture units 224, transistor count is a whopping 12.5 billion, base frequency being 1156, while the boost frequency is 1471. Of course, being overclocked.net, I overclocked it. Why wouldn't I? Realistically, AMD cards haven't been awesome overclockers, and there's a little bit of uh, overclocking debacle surrounding these new Vega 56 and 64 cards. I find it to be a nice transitional card if you want to stay team red instead of going team green. It's a very nice card, features 8 gigabytes of HVM2 memory, but it's that higher bandwidth uh, that's going to be at a 4096 bit bus. So realistically, the card itself is the reference design. We've seen it a couple times over again from the RX. 480 to the 580 and all the other variants. Um, backplate's present, which is nice to see. It does have a um, switch on the back where it allows you to turn off the GPU tack or turn it from red or blue. So that's kind of nice to do. Um, I would like to see white, which would have aesthetically matched more builds, but being that is a team red card, red makes sense to have it included. So um, other than that it is a traditional blower design. It does get very loud when the blower is turned all the way up. Uh, I'm gonna cut to a scene here <laughs> so you can hear that. Yeah, that was loud. So blower designs are not a quiet solution. Realistically, uh, I look at reference designs that are blowers, including my GTX 1080 Founders Edition, are strictly water-cooled items. I water cool uh, reference designs. They tend to overclock a little bit better when they're put on water. And then the add-in bore partners will tweak um, their air reference cool design. So uh, if you're gonna get an air cool design, go for their add-in board partner. Uh, personally, you'll probably be able to find one cheaper anyway than the reference design anyway. Um, but to each their own, sometimes this is nostalgic to look at anyway. So. Um, other than that, uh, pricing is a little absurd right now, being that they are in the minor craze right now. So with all the cryptocurrency that's happening right now, um, it's a little hard to get a hold of these. They go in and out of stock all the time. They make terrific mining cards, but gaming first overclock.net does a little bit of everything. So uh, I can understand all the hubbub about it. So. Uh, with that said, uh, we're going to go ahead and throw this into a machine, see how it benches. Um, I have a funny feeling it's going to be interesting because I'm going to be running the uh, Crimson 17.11.4 drivers uh, alongside the benchmarks I did for the GTX 1080 Ti Zotac Amp Extreme Edition, uh, as well as the GTX 1080 Founders Edition that I did as well too. So you'll be able to see the benchmarks in there. Um, but other than that, um, thermal wise, I'm interested to see how hot this thing actually gets. Uh, from what I understand, TDP is at 85 degrees Celsius, and then it actually starts uh, down clocking itself to save itself. So we will see. Um, I'm in about a 21C environment right now, um, but we will see. So. Thank you. 
All right, so I hope you liked the review of the Vega 56 by AMD. Uh, all in all, it's a good card. I'm gonna award this a four and a half out of five flames, mainly because of the cooler. It is a little louder than anticipated, but realistically, it's a good card if you can get your hands on one. My recommendation is to pick up a, a Vega 64 if you're gonna go Team Red. Uh, a GTX 1070 Ti is still a good recommendation and probably being a little bit cheaper than this right now due to the mining craze. So I'm Blue Devil with Overclock.net. Catch you guys in the next one.